Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video today. I'm going to show you the seven best BMWs that you can buy in 2024 with a budget of $50,000. If you haven't watched my last video where I talk about the seven best BMWs that you can buy in 2024 for $30,000, I suggest checking that out. I'm gonna have it linked right here. There's a lot of cars that I discuss in that video that are obviously at a cheaper rate. So if you haven't watched that video and you watch this video and you're like, oh my God, there's all these cars that are missing from this list, you might wanna go check out that one because it might be in that list already. In that list, I chose the budget being $30,000 because that was about the average that people were willing to spend on a used car in today's market. However, many of you were expressing interest in a video that would list options that were at a larger, a higher budget. So I threw 20K at it and we landed at 50K being the new budget. I still think $50,000 for a performance car like a BMW is attainable for some people. So I I think this video is going to be relatable and it also opens up a wide variety of options with this budget. I just want to note real quick that I am not listing these cars in any particular order. I was just picking them off as they came to mind. Okay. Let's get into it. Unsurprisingly, the B58 dominated my previous list and you probably won't be shocked seeing it again on this one. My first choice in this price range is going to be the A9X Supra. Now, I don't care if you think that this car should not be long on a BMW list. It does and it is a BMW. I don't mean that in a bad way at all. I actually mean it in a great way. Mostly everything about this car is BMW. The BMW DNA is objectively all all over this car. I owned a Supra about four years ago and it was the car that brought the most amount of controversy over any other car I had previously owned. Whether that be a good or a bad thing, it was just the facts at the time. The car was also relatively new at that time when I owned it, so a lot of people didn't really know about it. They didn't know that it was powered by a BMW B58 engine and there just weren't as many on the street, so it had a pretty crazy curb appeal. But people judged the Supra hard when it first came out and ultimately the car won. At this day and age, pretty much anyone with knowledge on BMWs or cars or the B58s, they are now praising the Supras across the board. When it comes down to drag racing, these cars are setting records left and right. It's a reliable car. It's a performance monster. And you can also make a lot of power in this car without having to spend too much money. The Supra, however, was not without any imperfections. For me, at least I am six foot two and I found that the car was pretty cramped. It is a smaller car. It is very low to the ground. The window space that you have, it's quite small. So trying to communicate with anyone outside of the window or drive through or anything of that nature can be a bit annoying if this is like your daily driver. You just don't have a ton of space in that car to do daily driver type things things. Getting in and out took a bit more effort. It did have quite a few blind spots. I think for a performance car, the Supra is outstanding. I think for a daily driver, it's probably not the best bet. And ultimately for me, being that I couldn't just keep all of my cars at the time, I had to make the tough decision of letting that car go and move into something else. Even my 135 is much more spacious than the Supra was. And they are both pretty small cars. But that size was also an advantage for the people who were really in to drag racing or roll racing. So while that may have been a drawback for me personally, it's a huge advantage for other people who are into drag racing and roll racing and making really good power and doing so in a lightweight, small chassis. There's no doubt about it when it comes to BMWs, the Supra is just dominating the drag racing world right now. I personally was able to push my Supra to 580 wheel horsepower with basic bolt-ons, a hybrid turbo, and an e-blend tune. This was more than enough power for the streets. And with the car being so lightweight, I was really able to dominate the majority of roll races that I got into with my friends or strangers. It was just a super fun car to own at that power level. There's also the styling and the curb appeal of the Supra. I have never in my life owned a car that got as much attention as the Supra did. It was constant, it was everywhere, that I went. Like I said before at the time, these were newer cars, so a lot of people hadn't seen them out on the street driving around. Today, they are obviously much more common, but four years ago, people thought that they were looking at some sort of supercar. And whether you like attention or not, the Supra will bring tons of it. 
Paired with the B58, you're getting a very unique performance car at a really good price. The Supras are just now making it into the low to mid 40K price range. Four years ago, I paid 52K for mine. So it seems that these cars are still holding their value relatively well. But in my opinion, these cars are worth every bit of $45,000. In the future, when I have more room, I would love to pick up another Supra and just take another crack at it. Turn it into to just a deadly straight line speed car. I think as long as you're under six foot four, you're probably going to be okay. But like I said before, you definitely want to experience one and drive one before making the decision to have this be your only car. I think as a secondary car, your performance car, your weekend car, this is a perfect choice. But if you're replacing a daily driver with the Supra, just make sure that it's something that you're comfortable getting in and out of and you have plenty of space because it is a little bit tight in the cockpit. Nonetheless, the Supra is a fantastic choice for under $50,000. My second choice BMW for under 50K is going to be the F87 M2 competition. In my last video, we talked about the F8X M3 and M4. Well, the F87 M2 competition utilizes the same power plant, which is the S55. You're getting that same twin turbo, three liter straight six engine in a smaller, snappier, and more nimble version of a car. Make no mistake about it, the M2 competition is meant for the corners. This car handles incredibly well. But instead of receiving the N55, like the OG M2, this car is getting the more powerful S55. The M2 comp also comes in manual or DCT. This choice for me personally is a tough one. I'm a manual guy through and through. All of my current cars are manual transmission cars. But after owning my GTS, I have an affinity for the DCT paired with the S55 platform. It is extremely good, like meant to be good. It sort of just feels right. However, with the M2 being a little bit smaller, the manual might be the way to go. I've had the luxury of driving the M2 competition in both manual and DCT. I don't think you can go wrong either way. It just depends on what type of driver you are and what you are really looking to get from the car. I think if you're wanting to focus more on the experience and the connection, obviously manual is gonna be the way to go. But on the other hand, if you're focusing more on road racing, or maybe this is doubling as your daily, the DCT might be the way to go. Either way, you can decide we have options, which is good. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with either of those options. But as I have said before, regarding the S55, pin the crank hub and send it. The F87 M2 competitions currently are going for about $43,000 and up. I can remember last year I was actually checking prices on these cars and they were in the low to mid $50,000 range. So it might be a good time to snag one being that they are dropping a little bit. I do think obviously they're going to drop a bit more in the future, but they have seemed to hold their value a bit better than the other F8X cars like the M3s and M4s. So I don't think that the F87s are necessarily going to tank in value. I think that they're going to do a better job of holding their value you compared to the other F8X cars, but you also don't see as many of the F87 competitions on the road as you do like an M3 or an M4. Either way, if you're looking for an incredibly fun car that absolutely decimates the corners, this is going to be the one for you. My third choice for BMW under $50,000 in this list is going to be the F97 X3M. All right, so if you thought the B58 or the S55 was cool, just wait until you meet the the S58. The S58 engine is the high performance version of the B58 engine. It was introduced in the F97 X3M and the F98 X4M. The S58 features twin turbos, a forged crankshaft, forged steel connecting rods, and forged aluminum pistons. Like the B58, the S58 also features direct injection, variable valve timing, in other words called Vanos, and variable valve lift. This is called Valvetronic by BMW. As opposed to the B58, the S58 features a slightly smaller displacement, increased bore, decreased stroke, and larger valves. Compression is decreased to 9.3 to 1 from 11.0 to 1. The S58 favors top end power and has a higher red line of 7200 RPMs. The X3M is the cheapest way that you are going to be able to get into the S58 platform, at least for right now. We are still waiting on any of the G8Xs to dip low 
enough into a price range that is even near $50,000. Most of those cars are still gonna be in the $60,000 range. Unless of course you are shopping at Copart, but that's a little bit different. Now obviously the X3M is not a car, it is an SUV, but it's probably the closest that an SUV can get to feeling like a performance car. I think if you just threw a really nice suspension setup at the X3M, it would handle pretty much like a car. The power with the S58 with simple bolt-ons and an e-blend tune is incredible, and you can achieve that effortlessly with a metal pipe and an email tune, you will basically be unsuspectingly gapping the majority of cars on the road in an SUV. All at the same time while you are carpooling and just hauling garden tools home from Lowe's. The X3Ms are now in the 40K plus price range. And if I was in the market for an SUV that would be my daily driver, that would be the car, no questions asked. Right now we are coming towards the end of a lease on a Volkswagen Tiguan that I've had for about four years. We do have about six more months left on that lease, but when we are done, I personally would like to jump into an X3M. There are people right now that are putting these cars into the nine second quarter mile range, which to me coming from the Honda days 20 years ago, where you're just struggling to make 13s and 14s in a quarter mile pass, dumping thousands and thousands of dollars into it is just mind blowing. Sometimes I forget how lucky we are in this day and age to have these cars with these power plants that literally we can just download load a file, throw a metal pipe on, and we are beating the majority of cars out there that we race. We are extremely fortunate. So yeah, if you just want more car, you're looking for a smaller SUV, but you want to retain that power and still make it feel like you're driving a car, the X3M is the way to go. My fourth choice on this list is going to be the G42 M240 xDrive. Oh my God, shocker, the B58 is back again. So I had my eyes on the G42s from the jump. Is a B58 power? car, it's all wheel drive, and it's a little bit smaller than the three series. I've always loved the three series and four series cars, but for some reason, I've been more drawn towards the two series. I just like the smaller, more compact vehicle. Not like any of the newer two series are necessarily small or light, <laughs> but they are a bit smaller from the three or four series from that generation. However, it is gonna be heavier than the Supra, but you do get the all wheel drive, so you are going to hook. When I noticed the G42 come out and I saw the price point that it was at, I knew that it was only a matter of time before someone came along and popularized this car, especially in the racing community. You may or may not remember Dre as one stock F30 on Instagram and YouTube. He had a white 340 and was basically dominating the racing scene in New York with his B58. He basically put the B58 platform when it came to racing on the map. If you own a B58 and you're into BMWs, chances are you know who he is. If you don't know who he is, you probably have not been awake. Well, Dre just picked up a G42 and he has been building it publicly on his YouTube channel. This man had this car built for racing and was racing within four weeks of when he purchased the car. I'm talking unlocked DME, drag pack, built transmission, and a giant spool turbo kit. At that point, I already knew it was over. I'm gonna have his channel linked down below. Make sure you check it out. Go give him some love. I think that was something that a a lot of people from the original 340 that he built wanted to see. They wanted to see the process of him building up these cars and racing them. And now we are really getting to see him build up this G42 from the back end. And it's it's just cool to watch the process. And it's really cool to watch him grow in the YouTube space. So make sure you guys go show him some support. The G42 is currently going for about $40,000 and up. If I'm being honest, I think this is probably on the high side of what that car is actually worth. I could see buying one of these cars if they were closer to like the mid or low $30,000 range. But nonetheless, it is still a super solid platform, especially if you want something a little bit smaller than the three series, but you still wanna retain that reliability, that tunability, and just overall power of the B58. It's really not gonna take much to put this car into rocket mode. The downside, however, is going to be the weight. These newer G series models are just getting longer, wider, heavier. And so you just have to keep that in mind if you're looking to 
build up one of these cars from like a performance standpoint, you are gonna be battling the weight versus the power. And I think that's why a lot of people still kind of go for the Supra when it comes to racing. However, you are getting the all wheel drive and you're still getting that B58. So it's still a great choice for a performance car. My fifth choice BMW is going to be the G42's brother, the G20 M340 X drive. Basically the same setup as the G42. However, you have two more extra doors and just a bit more space in the cabin. Some people just prefer sedan. So if that's you, this is gonna be the one that you're gonna wanna go for. The G20 M340 also has the B58. So you already know the deal. Easy power, dependable reliability at an affordable price. The G20s are currently going for $35,000, which is a fantastic price for the amount of car that you are getting. Especially if you don't wanna spend the extra to get the G42, the G20 might be the perfect one for you. All right, enough of these B58 cars. So the next one on my list is going to be the F90 M5. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm stretching the price on this one. They can be found for $50,000, but you'll probably be exhausting your entire budget and you're going to have to look pretty hard. However, if you're at the higher end of that budget and you can make it stretch maybe a few thousand dollars more, this is going to be a solid option because you are gonna be getting a ton of car for $50,000. The M5 is going to be a level up on everything. Power, luxury, status, you name it. As far as looks go, I also love the way that the F90 M5 looks. I personally have had the opportunity to drive quite a few F90 M5s and I've always been shocked by how well they drive and just how nimble they feel. Even though they are larger and heavier, they perform and handle like a smaller sports car. I was also given the opportunity to drive a few of the M5 CS models and that experience was just incredible. That is one of my favorite sedans built by BMW, but we will not be spending $100,000 today, so we're not gonna get into the CS version. The F90 M5 is powered by the S63 twin turbo V8 engine by BMW. It is a ripper of a power plant. Recently, my friend James What's Your Forte built up one of these F90 M5s and I was able to drive the heavily modified version of this car. It was terrifying in the best way possible. <laughs> That car was gut-wrenchingly fast with just a few bolt-ons and an e-blend tune, but there's more to the M5 than just looks and power. It has supreme luxury. Everything from the massaging seats to the interior lighting, the car's interior just makes you feel like you're in some high-end nightclub or you're on vacation. It's a bit of a step up from my current E-Series BMWs that I own. Like I said before, they aren't going to be the cheapest option, but if you can stretch your budget by a couple thousand dollars, or you are just a killer negotiator, you might be able to pick up an F90 M5 for about $50,000. And that brings us to our final car on this list, which is going to be the G05 X5M. I felt like I needed to throw a properly sized SUV into this list. And if I had to choose one that was larger than the X3M, it would be the X5M. Now there's nothing wrong with the X6M or the X4M, but the X6M is just a bit out of our budget if we're keeping it at $50,000. And the X4M is probably more comparable to the X3M, which is also a bit smaller. So if I had to decide between the X6M and the X5M for a properly sized SUV in this list, it's going to be the X5M. One of the great things about the X5M is it also has the same engine as the F90 M5. It has the S63. Like I said before, the S63 puts out plenty of power and the X5M them is gonna provide you with plenty of space. I will fully admit I'm not much of an SUV guy, but if I had to pick a larger SUV, this would be the one. I also feel like the X5M looks extremely good and aggressive on the road. You can always pick them out when you're driving behind them because of how wide and low their stance is for an SUV. They just look extremely good. I don't think that everybody is buying X5Ms to be fast necessarily, but I do see them often. So I have to assume that people are enjoying them as daily driver performance SUVs. It's very possible that someday when I have kids, this is gonna be the perfect SUV for me. Who knows? But right now you can get into an X5M for about $35,000. That is a whole lot of car for not a whole lot of money. If I did have to pick between the X5M and the X3M though, I am going with the X3M. I just prefer the SUV that's a little bit smaller, that feels more like a car, and I love that S58. But again, if you're looking 
for something a little bit bigger and something a little bit cheaper, the X5M might be perfect for you. All right, you guys, so that is my list. Love it or hate it, take it or leave it. Let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and comment down below. Tell me what you would add to the lists. Tell me what you would take away from my list. I'm sure that I've missed some great BMWs in this price range, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and you can always grab merchandise down below to support the channel. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We will see you in the next one. Peace.